Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles. I've already gone through them, and I'm going to show you what I found. Before I do that, let's talk about this week's tip. This week's tip is something very simple. Um, when you're doing this hobby, just remember speed kills, okay? How's that for a tip for you? Take your time. Go through the stuff that you find and take a look at each thing that you have when you're doing your searches. That way you won't miss anything. Um, the best example I have is what I've got in the background here, which is still my stacks of uh, wheat pennies, if you saw my last video. And I'm finding so many interesting things about those. If I was to just run through and just look for key dates, I'd be done with the whole bag in a day, and I'd have nothing to do. Instead, I've been taking these and just going year by year, making my different stacks, being able to look at different things, just like I do with my bills. Um, I go through them thoroughly, and that way I don't miss anything. I actually get to enjoy the search. So don't uh, go through everything so fast. Take your time and enjoy it. After all, this is a hobby. It's something you do for fun. So take your time and enjoy it. All right, so I've got my thousand in singles. I went through these. I will get them out of the way. Let's see what I found this week. Start off with a Where's George bill. I didn't, haven't found one of these in a while, so I was excited to see another one. Where's George? This one will get put in the computer, and we'll see where it's been. Uh, I found a trinary. This one was almost an alternator. Uh, all ones, threes, and nines, ending with one, three, or three, one, three, one, three, one. That was real close to a, a, a really interesting number on that one. Another trinary. This one's all zeros, ones, and sixes. This trinary is all twos, sixes, and nines. Uh, this one's a little bit older here. Another trinary, almost a radar number. Uh, one five nine 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 five five one, almost complete front to back. So so close on that one. If that first nine was a five, then it would have been a perfect radar. But still a trinary. It's a little beat. Probably not a keeper. Another trinary here, this one's all 1s, 5s, and 8s. Some kind of mark on that one there, so that's probably not going to be a keeper either. Did find quads, got quad 6s. And then I found this one. Check out that serial number. There are 5 zeros in a row. A total of 6 zeros combined. It is a trinary, zeros, 1s, and 2s. Uh, what's not to like about that one? That one is a, a, a very solid 5 number block with the 6th connector like that. Uh, so definitely an interesting find. Found a number of star notes. I think all of them were 2013s. Uh, this will start my new batch of stars, so I haven't looked these up yet, but I will. These will go into the stack, and when my stack gets big enough, I will go through them all. So much easier to go through your star notes that way. Um, what I do with my star notes is, once I have about 100 of them, I put them in order by year. So these are all 2013. And then for each year, you put them in order by Federal Reserve. So this one's out of New York. And that way, you can go to mycurrencycollection.com and simply put in one of that particular year of that particular uh, Federal Reserve Bank, and it'll tell you all of them. So just by entering one bill, you get all of them for that particular uh, uh, run for that particular uh, reserve bank rather than listing 100 numbers. You only have to do it once for each reserve. I uh, did find some older bills. This one's a 1999, still relatively crisp. 95, not quite as crisp. Another 95, this one's got a serious crease in it, a little bit of inking down there on the bottom. Another 95, no web note. Would have been nice to see one of those. This one's a 93. It's got some red markings here, a little bit of staining up here. Paper quality is good, though. Now, here's a 1981. I don't find very many 81s. 74, 77, and 81s seem to be relative, relatively elusive for me, so I was glad to see this one here. And the oldest bill I found, this one is a 1969D. Uh, it's very rare for me to find bills that are older than me. This is one of them. 69D from Chicago. A little bit off-center on the cut. A little bit thick on the top, thin on the bottom. That's all right. 69D, you don't see too many of those. 
So that's what I found out of this week's pickings. So let's see something from my safety deposit box. I will set those over there. I found the last of my errors. So this will finish off my error series. Um, let's start with this bill right here. This is a $10 bill from 1950. Uh, it's in pretty rough shape, but it had a very interesting error. I had never seen something like this. This particular error is on the back of the bill. And if you look, this portion of the bill has this alternate printing on it. So when, I, when you look at it closely, you can see that this printing is actually the same as this. This particular thing is called an offset print error. Uh, an offset print error is when they start the machine and they start inking before they start putting the paper through. Uh, let me show you what that would look like. You would have two cylinders. One cylinder would be completely flat. The other cylinder would be on top, and this would have all the engraving on it. So all the engraving is right here. And then there would be uh, inking put on here. As these cylinders start, the top cylinder would be pressing onto the bottom cylinder. And the paper, obviously, would be fed in this way so that it would get inked. But if the cylinders start and the ink starts to flow before the paper is set in, the impression from this roll gets put onto this roll. So now you've got this roll inking this roll, and when the paper goes through, it gets inked on both sides, front and back. So I'm assuming that what happened with this particular bill is that they started the inking process, and the paper, when it went in, wasn't all the way on the edge. The paper was actually over a little bit, so it wasn't centered properly. So that means that a portion of the bottom roll got inked. So like where this would be, would, this print would be on this roll here as it went through, and then they put the paper in, causing it to get inked on both sides, if that makes sense to you. So that is a partial uh, a partial imprint there, an offset ink error. It's an offset print because it wasn't printed directly, it was pr printed indirectly. And it's not a bleed through because they don't match up, and if you look, it's actually the reverse. So that's how you know it's an offset print. Uh, it doesn't match up exactly here, so that's also a thing that makes it offset. Now there's various errors that are like this. Um, here's another one. This one here is, this is a 1935 E $1 silver certificate, and this one was graded. It's not in the greatest of shape. This one graded at a 25, but if you look at this one, this was the first page fed through right after the machine started. You can see right here how there's this line, and you've got half of George Washington's head. You can see it uh, say the United States of America backwards on there. You can see it say one backwards here. You can see it say one backwards up here. So it's a partial offset error. Uh, once again, that's simply caused by them starting the rolls before paper is fed in. This would have been one of the first uh, pages that, w or first pieces of paper that went through to get that error on there. Uh, once again, it's offset. It's not perfectly lined up because it wasn't intended to be printed on this side. It was supposed to be printed on the other side. So this side is fine. The other side is offset. Now the most dramatic error you're going to find of this type is when you have the full offset printing. This bill here, you can see the back. You can see, more importantly, which way the building faces. Okay, you can see how the pillars are on the left-hand side of this building. But on the front of the note, you can see that the entire back is an offset print onto the surface of the front. And we know it's an offset print because it's done backwards. You can see here, In God We Trust is backwards. Uh, the pillars are on the right-hand side of this building. 
and the entire thing is literally offset. It does not match up. Let me zoom in a little closer so you can see that. Now, in this particular error, um, this is a complete offset, so it's the entire back that makes, that's what makes this particular bill worth as much as it is. Uh, it's really neat to see stuff like that. Uh, remember, these aren't bleed through. If you hold it up to the light, you can see through and see that the back is a different print than the front. That's another way to tell. Um, also, the back, even as dark as the ink is here, uh, is not dark enough for it to have bled through. So that's what an offset printing error would look like. Uh, that's how they're created. They're created when the ink starts and the rollers start before paper is inserted. They should be pulled by the Federal Reserve. Notes like this should be taken out and put and replaced with star notes. When they escape, that's how we get our hands on them. All right, guys, if you, if you learned anything new this week, hit that like button. If you like what you see and want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. And please don't forget to tell your friends. I enjoy making these videos for you guys, and I enjoy all the feedback I get. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.